If I asked a random person which gases are causing climate change, chances are they'll just say carbon dioxide. Maybe a couple people would say methane too. But what if these answers were overlooking a more insidious and nearly unregulated greenhouse gas? A gas that's over 9 times stronger at warming the earth than methane, and 265 times stronger than carbon dioxide. A gas that leaks from our soil and ocean, forms when lightning strikes, but also comes from our farms, cars, and our cattle? I'm talking about nitrous oxide, the third most abundant greenhouse gas in our global emissions. Even though it may not look like much, the nitrous oxide emitted around the world in 2023 had the warming effect of over 3 billion tons of CO2, more than the emissions of every EU nation combined. And not only are our nitrous oxide emissions growing, but they're outpacing the highest predictions made by the IPCC. But where is it really coming from? How much is man-made versus naturally occurring? And most importantly, how can we stop emitting it? This is the climate warming gas that nobody's talking about. First, let's cover the basics. The nitrous oxide, or N2O I'm talking about here, is the same stuff as laughing gas, NOS fuel, and those little canisters in the music festival parking lots. This molecule is naturally occurring, playing a minor role in our nitrogen cycle. It also happens to be infrared active, meaning that it interacts with longwave radiation, aka heat, in our atmosphere. As this heat travels off Earth's surface and out towards space, it gets tangled up in nitrous oxide molecules, getting bounced around in the atmosphere. This keeps the heat from easily escaping, making nitrous oxide a classic greenhouse gas. And unlike methane, which gets removed from the atmosphere after about a decade, nitrous oxide sticks around for 110 years before getting removed. This, plus the fact that N2O interacts with different infrared wavelengths than CO2 or methane, makes it an extremely potent greenhouse gas, up to 273 times stronger than carbon dioxide. This makes it incredibly powerful at warming the climate on short timescales, even before humanity started emitting it. But if it only lasts about a century in the atmosphere, then what is constantly making it? The answer to that question will take us underground, to the depths of the sea, and inside a lightning bolt. The biggest natural source of nitrous oxide is by far the soil, specifically little microbes living inside it. These microbes live deep underground, where there's very little oxygen. Here, they get all their energy by eating nitrates and nitrites found naturally in the soil and burping them out as inert nitrogen gas, or N2. However, this nitrate consumption, also known as denitrification, is a sloppy process and releases nitrous oxide as an intermediate byproduct. Since there's a lot of soil with a lot of nitrate and lots of microbes eating it, this adds up to around 6.4 megatons of nitrous oxide every year. The ocean is another huge source of nitrous oxide. In certain regions deep underwater, bacteria break down so much organic matter that they use up all the oxygen in the water. This process creates oxygen minimum zones, or OMZs, where very few things can survive. But one thing that can survive are little microbes from the soil, this time adapted for life in the OMZ. Here they do the same thing as their soil cousins, breaking down dissolved nitrate in the seawater to form N2 gas, also producing nitrous oxide along the way. This eventually bubbles its way to the surface and adds up to 4.7 megatons every year. But what's all this about lightning? When lightning strikes, the air around it is about 5 times hotter than the surface of the sun. This heat is so intense that it splits inert gases like N2 into highly reactive single atoms of nitrogen. These atoms will latch onto nearby oxygens and form gases like NO2 and NO. Eventually, through atmospheric processes, some of this will become nitrous oxide and build up in the atmosphere. Since there's only so much lightning on Earth, the source is relatively small, at around 0.6 megatons. But unfortunately, humanity's emissions are a little bigger. In the 1800s, humanity started producing a lot more greenhouse gases, nitrous oxide being one of them. Over just two centuries, the atmospheric levels of N2O have gone from about 270 parts per billion to almost 340 parts per billion today. Even though this may not seem like much, its insane potency means this increase has caused about 10% of global warming. But where is it all coming from? The biggest sector driving this is surprisingly not fossil fuels, but agriculture. Part of this comes from when forests are clear cut and burned down to make room for farmland, but the largest portion comes from the overuse of synthetic fertilizers. 
By flooding farmland with fertilizers, it causes our little nitrate chomping microbes to go crazy, emitting far more nitrous oxide than they would under natural circumstances. This is responsible for about 70% of agricultural emissions, with the other 30% coming directly from livestock. Specifically, they're, uh, yeah. The same pattern can be seen in the rapid expansion of aquaculture, with all the nitrate and fish poop stimulating the same microbes underwater. All these fertilizers, both synthetic and natural, generate about 3.6 megatons of N2O every year. And even though the biggest sector driving emissions aren't fossil fuels, they still play a major role. Fuels like coal and oil are chock full of nitrogen. When they're burnt at high temperatures, the nitrogen reacts with oxygen to form different compounds, one of them being nitrous oxide. Chemical manufacturing is also responsible for a big chunk of emissions. For example, the production of nylon uses adipic acid, which generates nitrous oxide as a byproduct. Making nitric acid for use in fertilizers and explosives also generates a serious amount of N2O. And speaking of explosives, war has a massive impact on emissions. In the last few years, we have seen a significant increase in typically unaccounted nitrous oxide emissions from the wars in Ukraine and Gaza. All combined, fossil fuels, industry, and war are responsible for about 1.1 megatons of nitrous oxide. Oh, and did I mention nitrous oxide is also a massive ozone-depleting substance? Since it was not regulated by the Montreal Protocol, which you can learn more about in the video I linked down below, it is the most powerful ozone-depleting substance we are still pumping into our atmosphere. Okay, so our balance of nitrous oxide is clearly out of whack, but how can we possibly cut back on emissions? It's actually easier than you think. To get nitrous oxide emissions under control, we need to address the biggest source, agriculture. Fertilizers have been notoriously overused, especially on farmland in rapidly growing countries with low regulations. By placing stricter regulations on how much fertilizer farmers can use, when they can use it, and where to best place it, it's possible to drastically cut back on nitrous oxide emissions. Through better monitoring, reporting, and practices, Europe saw their agricultural N2O emissions drop by 20% in two decades through their nitrates directive. Also, since the manure of livestock, specifically cattle, is such a big driver of emissions, cutting back on your beef and red meat consumption helps reduce the demand for these climate warming creatures. Lastly, the main industrial sources of nitrous oxide like nylon and nitric acid production can be curbed through emissions capture or basically scrubbing all the nitrous oxide out of the exhaust gas using special catalysts. These catalysts, which break down nitrous oxide into nitrogen and oxygen gas, are already in production and have proven themselves to be effective. It's just a matter of governments telling large chemical plants, found mostly in China and America, to pay for the treatment instead of allowing them to needlessly continue dumping planet-warming gas into the atmosphere. Even though it may not get the same media coverage as CO2 or methane, Nitrous oxide deserves more attention on a global scale. This wickedly powerful greenhouse gas has the potential to push humanity past warming thresholds if we don't change our behavior. We need better farming practices, a lower demand for meat, and regulations on chemical industries that treat our atmosphere like a free-for-all landfill. Curbing nitrous oxide emissions is truly one of the simpler parts of reaching a sustainable future. Let's not wait until it's too late to act on it. Thanks for sticking around to the end. As always, all the sources are linked down below. If you learned something from this, enjoyed this, or just want to see more climate science on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to support Planet Zero. I'll see you next time.